So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna ask, who have envelopes? Do you have an envelope? Yes. Would you open your envelope? No, just one at a time. I, I'm just excited to see what you got. Really? Wow. Okay. All right. Would you open yours? Because I know there's not one of those in there. I, I was thinking about it, but then my wife would have killed me. <laughs> we couldn't go out to eat today. Because I know it's out there. I'm just wondering who got it. Oh, cool. What did you get? Because I emptied my wallet today. I did. All right. There's one really special bill out there that I'll explain to you. Go ahead. That's a special, that's a very special, someone gave that to me for my birthday. One dollar bill, all right, go ahead, Gloria. So it's so interesting when, now how did, how, at first when I started messing with you with these, how did it make you feel taking, taking envelopes? Were you excited? Were you nervous? Like I was gonna play a practical joke on you? Life is of good rewards because really, when you think about it, you just received a reward that you didn't work for. Whether it's a dollar bill or $10 bills or a $5 bill, you didn't really work for it. I just blessed you. And it's okay because I'm really excited about it because the Lord spoke to me. This is what I need to do to open up the service this way. And so I'm excited about it. But see, so many times we have three attitudes, three attitudes of a giving life. We need to understand there's three attitudes of a giving life. Number one, we got to have the attitude of don't hoard it greedily. So many times people hoard their money and say, this is mine, but we are called to steward it wisely. We are to really be wise about our money. You know, too many times we say, we're just too poor, we can't really afford it. But if we steward our money wisely and we are stewards, what does that mean? Do you, do you ever budget your money? Do you ever look at what's in your in the coffers of your pay budget? You know, the first tenth goes to God. The the ninety percent goes to pay your bills because that's what the Bible talks about. You know, don't rob God in Malachi. You look at the stewarding of your money, and it will go further than you can ever say. What what did Christy just say? Look at what just took pay took place. All this extra money came. Forth because she was faithful in tithing. Attitude two, don't handle it deceitfully. Don't, don't try to rob anything. You know, if someone gives you money back, extra money back from the, the grocery store, go give it back. Even if it's a nickel or a quarter, just you overpaid me or you didn't charge me for that. But distribute it honestly. Oh, attitude three. Don't spend it selfishly. But share it generously. I love this morning. I wish I did have hundreds and fifties. And I wish I could have ordered pizza from a pizza man like they, they showed the big churches and have this guy come in and, and, and deliver the pizza in the, in the service. And, and he came up and I could give him like a thousand dollar in hundred dollar bills in front of the whole church. I wish I could do that because that would be fun because usually when that happens, that person, God's already had it all set up. It's, it's how God sets up. You know, how many times have God just spoke to you and says, that person's in need, you just need to bless them. 
In our first church, we had a we had a single mom that God spoke to us, and we had no money. And so every every month we would write a check to the church, and we would help this person out, and we had it under the person in our church called the anonymous. You ever met the anonymous? And you, the church would give it to this single mom every month, and they would come. She goes, Pastor Tim, did you just give that money? Nope. Because it's none of their business. None of your business. It's under none of you, too. Because don't let your right hand, right hand, <laughs> Forget which side was which, you know. Um, we can be a blessing to one another without letting people know. We should bless one another. And that's the very fact is we should help one another out. Don't spend it selfishly. You want to bless somebody? Bless them. Let God speak to your heart and do it. I love it in the passage I read to you. Too many people spent and not, you know, your money will rust and die away. Moths will eat your money. Don't hoard it. But don't spend it crazily on stuff you don't need. I'm a shopper, man. Anybody else a shopper in the house? Everybody's like, I don't like really to shop. What about Amazon? That's shopping, by the way. Auctions, that's shopping. Tool works. Northern Tool is a shopping. Am I calling people out now? <laughs> Those are shopping things. Now, let me tell you, my dad was a great, great saver when nobody else knew about it. He would be like that. I love going to front of a fan when it makes you look fatter than you really are. And, and the very fact is that he would, we went shopping and he had hidden money in his cars. Now, I'm not going to ask you guys when you get your little allowance, what you do with your money, but my dad had hiding places in his vehicle to, for his special fun. And my dad, we went shopping because he wanted a remote control car. And so we went to this hobby store and we walked in there and he was buying this, it's called a Frogger. It was a remote control car that cost him like five, 600 bucks. And I said, dad, we don't have that kind of money. He says, you don't, but I do. I says, but mom's gonna kill you. Okay, gentlemen, don't spend it selfishly, but share it generously, okay? My dad was a very generous person, but my mom always gave my dad an allowance, but he also liked spending my mom's money as well. So he would always save his money up, and then he would walk up to his special account, and he'd walk back in and buy these things. And I was like, Dad, it's my money. I can spend it any way I want it. And he would like, every time I'd come home from school, he'd give me money for whatever. And I was just like, okay, that's really neat. So what does this have to be about being generous? My dad would always give people money out of his special account. He was always generous. Now my mom was generous as well. And we have to remember that you might not say, well, you might say, well, I don't have a lot of money to give. I don't have a lot of money to help people. But you know what? If God speaks to your heart to bless somebody, do it. And watch what God does with this money that you have. Amen? But it's not only with monetary stuff. It's with your time. It's with um, coming alongside. It's with transportation. It's what, with whatever. So I'm not just harping on, I'm not just talking about money. Generous, generosity goes a long way.
How about words of encouragement? All right? So you might just think, well, this is all about money today. No, it's not. It's about generosity. It goes so much further. Luke 12, 15 says this. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. You see that word, all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Possessions come from such a long, long words of definitions. Possessions. It's, it's stuff that you own. It's your finances. It's, it's, it's your attitude. It's, it's, it, goes, it goes into so many different defi definitions. I j I'm trying not to say look at your money. I'm also saying look at your life in a whole. Generosity comes from a heart. Proverbs 11, 24 through 25 says, One person gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever ref refreshes others will be refreshed. So basically, whatever you reap, you will really sow. If you reap nothing, you're not going to get anything in return. If you all, all you want is a handout, if you always have your handout and you never do anything in return, you're not going to get anything. Do you understand that? Whatever you reap, you will automatically receive. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Sorry, thank you, my hum. I have papers going through in my head right now. Whatever you reap, you will sow. If I don't plant a garden, will I get a garden? If I put gas in my gas tank, will my car go anywhere? Yes. Really? If I don't put any gas in my car, my car is going nowhere. If I don't. If I don't do stuff, there's no momentum. So you have to, you have to, whatever you reap, you're going to sow. James 5, 7 through 12 says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. Patiently wait for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another. Come on, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard a, of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord's final, finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Let's try this for a minute. Try this with me. Yes. yes. Got that. No. Okay, let's try it one more time because we get this whatever in our statement sometimes. Yes. 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 Okay. No. no. Okay, some of you missed it. No. no. See, we kind of miss that sometimes because we get this attitude. Sometimes we go, well, because I, I, I like the yeses and nos. Because some, sometimes I hear this, well, you don't really want to hear my answer. I've heard that before. Well, I want a truthful answer. I'd like to see here, I want, before I answer you, I want to pray about it. That's a truthful answer. Let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. Not maybe, whatever. No. Yes. No. What is the truth? Let your yeses be yeses and your noes be no. Do you want to go? Yes. Then go. No, I don't want to go. Okay, you don't want to go. Too many times we say, I don't know. That to me is a no. Right? 
I'm assuming that you're not really committed to going, and then I'm going to be like waiting in my car going, okay, we're going to go out to make eat. Well, if it's a going out to eat, we're all going. Food is a thing that we're all going to do. But if it's going down to cut down a tree and you say, I don't know, it's going to be me, Gary, and somebody else. Randy and whoever, maybe Marilyn, Carrie, or whoever else. We'll, we'll be out there. If it's, it, maybe not Carrie, Carrie. Oh, Carrie knows the handle of salt better than I do. Yeah, I'm just going to sleep on the couch today. So. So the very fact is, too many times we are passive aggressive on our answers because we're scared or fearful of hurting that person's feelings. That's true. You like that, don't you? It's hot up here. Get that on camera. <laughs> but the very fact is, we don't want to be truthful, even though the Bible calls us to be truthful. We need to be honest. Try this again. Yes. 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 No. 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 We need to be honest with one another in everything. Yes and no. That's what the Bible says. I hope we can do that as a church. In, in meetings, yes and no's. Amen? Amen. All right. For, I'll try not to fall again. Five, four actions of giving life. Here's what we can do. Four actions of giving life. Number one, be patient. We can be patient with one another, be patient with ourselves. We can do that. And the scripture says that in this passage that we just talked about. We can be patient with one another. We can be patient with, with ourselves. We can literally be patient. Easy, right? Unless we all like being quick about everything. Action two, persevere. We need to persevere in, in every situation. Not give up attitude. Amen? Action three is probably one of the difficult of the four is be consistent. In our world, we live in a world that is not consistent. And number four, show compassion. Show a little compassion. Mother Teresa wrote this, and I love this statement. It says this, I alone cannot change the world but I can cast a stone across the water to create many ripples. Think about that. I alone cannot change the world, but I cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples, which means that small stone is creating a change. We can be that change, right? We can be that ripple effect as long as we allow the Lord to use each one of us to be patient, to persevere, to be consistent, and to show compassion. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Lord, I just pray and I thank you so much that, Lord, that as we go through this, Lord, may we hear more than just a giving sermon, but, Lord God, more than that. But, Lord, a sermon about your compassion. Your good life for us. Your generosity towards us. May we be generous towards others. And Lord, may we be committed to you. And may we live a generous life, Lord. Lord, we give you this day, Lord, in your name. Amen.